Let's welcome our elder brother, Hyo Jin Hyang Jin. Last night, Father uh, left for uh, Alaska. Uh, Father is uh, resuming the uh, uh, workshop for uh, Japanese leaders. And, uh, he's, uh, he will uh, look after uh, a thousand more Japanese members who will be coming to Alaska. And shortly afterwards, Father will. Go to Korea uh, and uh, will reside over uh, an additional workshop which will be held in Jeju Island. Father is so ultimately planning on educating 50,000 Japanese members. So, uh, on top of your prayer toward mother's success, you should also keep that in your prayers as well. Uh, 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 briefly, uh, this morning, uh, after Mother's speech, uh, uh, some of you were gathered at uh, uh, East Garden, and uh, uh, after the speech, uh, Mother gave a brief report, I mean, uh, Colonel Park, uh, Dr. Park gave a brief report on uh, the status of uh, what's happening in Japan. And uh, he, you know, the initial thing that he was saying was that you know everything, you know, truly the members ship is on fire. Uh, apparently, I mean, obviously, that we can all assume that that would be the case. The thing is, uh, people are truly on fire. But most of all, you know, the the message itself is so appropriate for the situation in Japan right now. You know about the negativity that. Uh, Japanese media has been cooking up, and even uh, they uh, <laughs> they threw some some they try to cook up some uh, story on me too. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that news footage. I know I saw that footage on me, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, those of you who were with me in Japan. When I when we when I held uh, the little circle show last year, <laughs> that uh, uh, that's certainly not the case, and uh, that person has never recorded at Mahan Center. I wish she did. I wish she had. I wish uh, that person would have recorded at Mahan Center. Maybe she. I would probably charge her a million dollars or something. <laughs> She's not my type. <laughs> so, so you know the nature of their intention. Obviously, there's so much fabrication going on, and uh, most of you being here, uh, and I have seen many of you who are sitting in this room for. The duration that Father had been here in America, 22 years, that you know what Father has been doing, and you know what he had invested and how much he had invested in America. So I don't even want to get into that. I don't want to bring myself and Father's integrity down to their <laughs> deviant level, disgusting level. So anyway, that we can deal with later. No problem, no problem dealing with those kind of garbage. But anyway, uh, 
the, the message itself is so pro appropriate for the time. When Pat and Colonel Park was giving testimony about, you know, the content of uh, Mother's message, clarifying many of these neg negative people's accusations. And that's truly, uh, you know, really changing the perception that had been, you know, the overnight changed by uh, negative media. So, in a way, it was a great, uh, just beginning, but, you know, e even, uh, even though it's just the beginning, just on the initial phase, we're seeing great results happening. So, uh, you know, I bow my head to Mother, and I truly and sincerely hope for her success till the end. And I'm sure that's the case with all of you. So please keep that in your prayers. Make sure that the mother can be successful. Father told me to pray in the morning, in the afternoon, in the lunchtime, and in the evening. Three times a day. Think about mother's success and to keep it in your prayers. So. While, while we're on the topic of success, my topic for today is secrets to success. <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't I wasn't prepared to uh, I wasn't really uh, prepared to speak today. <laughs> but uh, like everything else, you have to be ready. So uh, I hope I can give you some pointers that, uh, that I feel inside that, are, that is important. Basically, the essence, of the bottom line of my to you know, conclusion to my topic is Father's ways. Secrets to success is following Father's ways. So I will share my observation of how Father is through the eyes of his son. <laughs> uh, it's very difficult to really talk about this particular topic because there's just so much to talk about. Yet it's so difficult to really pinpoint uh, what is greater than uh, the other. I don't know what to exclude and what to uh, emphasize. But most of you, have obviously you know, thought about this particular thing very much. And I know that everybody wants to be like Father. That's why you're here. There's no other rationality or reasoning behind you being here other than because you want to become like Father, that you are sitting in this stone floor. First of all, uh, one thing that comes, the first thing that comes to mind is that there are so many things. Obviously, you know, we all want to be blessed, right? We want to receive blessing from heaven. We want our deeds to be answered. We want our sacrifice to be somehow redeemed. And we always yearn for blessing. Because hopefully, and ideally speaking, you want to receive it so that you can give to another. They can share the blessing. A good example would be prodigal son. No. Father is certainly not the prodigal son. His way has not been like the prodigal son. He knows how to use the blessing. He knows how to distribute the blessing. There's so many people that I know, and maybe might be you, who have received a lot of blessing, but don't know what to do with it. And you just let it sit in your heart. Just let it sit in your mind and let it rot. And I've seen that so many times. People who have been blessed, they're so... I don't know what they're caught up in, but they're caught up in something. Primarily caught up in themselves. 
their own physicalness and don't know what to do with the blessing that they have received. What good is it if you have the blessing and can't use it? Huh? Right? That's what I see in Father. The first thing that comes to my mind that impresses me is that Father truly understands and knows how to share the blessing, give out the blessing. I've seen so many people who are very smart, uh, who has, who understands the ways of this world. And because of that person's uh, ability, acquired ability, that certain things comes to them. But another thing that attracts them is a uh, thing that Jesus said about anxiety. We talked about on Matthew 6.25. 6.25, yeah. Something like that. You shouldn't be anxious about self-glory, right? About the physicalness, about just sustaining your physical self. You should, your focus should be something higher than that. You know, there have been several people, even in my staff, under me, who has struggled to see certain things. That being, they've been in the church for about 10 years, over a decade. And they've done a lot. You know, they went through all the uh, pioneering course. They went, they went through fundraising. They were, you know, model uh, members in MFT. And... Uh, they really worked hard going, you know, being processed through all the formula course, but never having to gain love to, toward Father. What the hell is that? How is that possible? But I've seen it. There are several kids, even within my staff, who have struggled with that particular problem. They've been in the model, they've been a model example in the church, being, gaining a lot of results, doing a lot of things, you know, making a lot of accomplishments on their own, centering on what the Father said, centering on the standard that He has set, but never having to, you know, fully understand love toward the Father. And I thought about what the hell is, why is that? What's going on in that person's mind? Huh? What's, being, what, what's deficient in that person's mind? What's missing? Huh? Obviously, if you really sacrifice for the sake of God and for true parents, obviously, that's why I, I guess you're trying to do good in the church. But how come you can't understand it when even those people who struggle come to understand the love for Father. Why is that? I thought about it. I said, no. That was a, the reason was very simple. He wasn't loving Father. He was just in love with the principle. He, did, he couldn't see the principle being manifested in man, but he just loved that, partic that principle. Just the concept of it. He just loved the conceptualness of the principle and not the manifestation of the principle, which is father. Why? Because that person is so fucking subjective and arrogant. He thought in his mind that as long as I have this, I can surmount to something. Basically, Possessing the principle was to serve his needs. It wasn't to connect to true parents. It was to glorify himself, ultimately. Uh, that kind of anxiety has made him blind to see the truth in Father's love, the degree 
in the Father's love. And I see many of you who struggle with that same thing. Sometimes I think about that too. Because principle made me see all the questions that I, and as a man, as any person, as a human being, want to really understand the meaning of life. But try to put yourself in the position. I mean, it's difficult as it is to solve your freaking problem. But try to, try, to, try to put yourself in a position trying to find out all the secrets of the Bible, struggling through the, you know, all the mysteries and secrets that billions of humanity have searched for through endless history, seemingly endless history. You think about that. Huh? You think about the struggle that he had to endure. And through that struggle, we have access, so it has a, such an easy access to such a wonderful and such a liberating knowledge. You think about that. In a way, because of that person, I gained a greater insight. Without him, I probably would have never thought about it. Because, you know, to me, it's maybe you can say it might come natural. Because he's my father. Eh? But in a way, that was what was destroying that person. He was literally being torn inside his mind. He knew, you know, him, you know, he knew why he has to, you know, he, he knew to some degree, to some extent, he, why he had to connect to Father, because, you know, principle, origin, emanates from Father. But the thing is, he couldn't connect those two together and put it into his life. And that was, he was really struggling hard. <sighs> yeah, that. He clearly do not have anxiety told his physical or self-glory. Everything that he does is for God. He clearly understands the reason for his dedication, purpose for his dedication. That's another thing that is liberating him. How many times do you struggle because you don't know what the, why the hell you're dedicating your life on it's such a difficult path. Huh? You don't, you, 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 you wonder. I was, sometimes I wonder too. But more and more answers I get because I'm rubbing heads with you guys. It, it makes my life easier. However, still, dedication itself is hard. But not knowing why you're dedicating certainly would make your life much harder. A lot of you are struggling because you, you really cannot put yourself to the degree, to, to the point where you can fulfill your responsibility, which is tremendous. And because you do not understand the need for the fulfillment of that responsibility, many times your dedication slips. And in a way, vice versa, if your dedication was there to begin with, maybe you, your, your responsibility, fulfillment of it, won't have to slip. Hmm? But it does. It does. So you really have to search inside. You have to base your dedication on something, right? So what the hell is that? What the hell should be your base for your dedication? That's another thing that you got to answer. Do you love God? Is that your base for your dedication? 
Do you love truth, parents? Is that the base of your dedication? Well, I'm trying to make that as my base. Eh? What, do, what, what do you think? You think that is a proper base for, a, uh, for, for us to be dedicating our lives? Eh? I think that's important. So how can you reckon, how can you come to that realization? Huh? Yeah, think about it. Without tears, you can't. Uh, how often do you drop your tears over your, your grief? And after a while, you feel better. Uh, how often do you felt that? Or how often did you cry because you were truly joyful? Why well, tear, tear has a power to give you greater life at the same time wash away those grief and give you clear reasoning, right? It clarifies your mind so that you can better reason. Many times you struggle because you feel the Lack of, I guess, reciprocation or lack of communication. Yeah, you know, typical, you know, you know uh, case would be a relationship with somebody that you love. A lot of misunderstanding comes, and you cry over it. And after you cry, somehow you feel better. <laughs> but you shouldn't rely on tears just for that purpose. Yeah, certainly, you know. That, that tear has that power. But the thing is, you should use that to understand the inner essence of God, right? That should be our goal, to understand the Father's heart. The more I cry, really, honestly, I become closer to him. That's how it is in my case. And I saw Father when I was young. You know, when he prays, I used to, oh, because, you know, <laughs> back then, pretty much lived together. And I saw him weep for hours and hours. He just, he so, just, you know, he, he, he normally prays kneeling, he just you know, completely, his head buried in, a, in his hands. You know, it's under, it's like a stone floor. So, you know, a tear will collect. So around his face would normally be like a little pool of water, tears. Try that. Try it. Many times we complain. You know, we're so freaking slothful. They're so lazy and complacent. We're not even before even trying, we want the freaking answer. How 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 much did you try? Did you really try to pray in that matter? How many people in this room can truly and honestly? can tell me, look at me directly in my eyes and say, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what Father has gone through. <laughs> I know there's nobody in this room who can say that to me, looking at my face. So don't tell me this and that. And I know, deep in my heart, as long as Father has Certain amount of people who are dedicated. You know, it doesn't, it's, a very, it's a limited number. However, s certain amount. I know we can take care of the world. And I don't care if you drop dead and drop away and leave the church. Frankly, I don't give a shit. Uh, 
A few days ago, Father sent several missionaries to Manhattan Center before they were headed toward uh, Washington. And I had an opportunity to talk to them. And I told them straight on, the reason that I came here and showing you this place is because, not because of what you have done, because your dedication toward Father. That's the only reason that I'm taking my precious time to be with you and nothing else. Yeah, there's still a lot of anger in my heart, honestly. I'm trying to love this world, love humanity as Father. But to me, that process is a very difficult process. <sighs> well, I don't want to get into that, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. And I said, now you look. You have dedicated your life toward Father. And I know you want to do more. And I know you have really nothing to really show to Father. Because what Father deserves, based on what he has acquired, you know, what he has prepared for us, your nations. But I know you're not sitting, you, 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 you're not sitting in front of me having that responsibility fulfilled. The only thing that you can show for yourself is your dedication to a father. And I respect that. And if that is the key to coming into my heart, just imagine what would be like when you go to a spirit world. Eh? Just think of yourself when you die. <laughs> and you enter the spirit world. Billions of people looking at you. Because they all want to be in your position. Because this, this point in time, this particular circumstance will never re reoccur again, ever again. This is one sin of history. How many people have died because they wanted to be at the table that Jesus drank and ate? Ah, huh? think about that. And you sit here after having Father spend all of his life, especially, in, especially to America, much of his prime speaking to you. So to me, you know, it doesn't take a genius to really think about where the hell you belong. And I don't care how you take it. I'm gonna shove it in as I, as I truly see fit. I'm gonna shove it in your face. If you can't take the heat, get out. And uh, I don't want to be recognized for tolerating what I had to endure. I don't consider it as an accomplishment. Yeah. In one hand, you're somebody. You're somebody as high. But in reality, you're the dirt. <laughs> when you see that, when you live in that kind of dual fairy, <laughs> conflicting reality, to say the least, from birth, it's not easy.
But that in itself, I don't consider as accomplishment. I certainly, of course, there's endless blame to go around to everybody. But then is, I want to do something on my own based on my ability to make father proud. That's what I want. So last, if last week was inspiring to you, to this week, you're going to feel some pain. Don't write me that kind of letters. Don't tell me what uh, talk is inspiring. Fuck you. That kind of fucking attitude. Papa Father is trying to play a game. Okay. If you're truly serious about changing the world, I don't think you can say that. I really don't think so. I don't think you can depend on that kind of things. Huh? That kind of experience to change the world. That kind of weakness. We gotta be exceptional. Huh? We gotta be somebody that no man, no human being has ever been. That's the only way we can make that ideal come true, for crying out loud. And when I read that kind of letter, it depresses me. It really does. Judging the fucking mildness of my talk. You think pleasantry will get you? Oh, you think that will really eradicate Satan from this fucking world? Father gave you a lot of things. You might not know the, uh, the importance of it. I don't think you might, I don't think you realize the need yet. That's why you don't really understand the value of Father's investment to you, Father's words. Obviously, your need is at the level of struggle. That's why my stupid talk. Huh? Sometimes uh, I don't want to abuse my authority. Sometimes I really wish. Because what I know, the effect that being, as long as you're connected to Father, because you, so if I have pain in my heart, you will be sick. Spirit will not. <laughs> and 
Father knows that too. Father knows his authority. That's why he always reserves his judgment. <clears throat> but that's hard. Sometimes I want to go and just strangle that motherfucker. Father can, Father can truly read the times. Father always keeps his ear to the ground. His eyes looking at this world. Many times, you know, a lot of uh, opportunities come, but they're missed because we're not vigilant. Father always prepares for the next phase. He clearly understands what he needs to accomplish. He clearly tries to understand best he can the world that he's dealing with. And that's my intention too. I'm trying to learn that from Father. I'm trying to do my best to understand the youth, second generation. It took me, a, it's, it's taken me a while to really understand, fully understand. And I, Father, we always, we know, you know, and all this dispensation never changes, but times do change. And we can't just sit back based, you know, and based on our past experience of our youth, try to make reference to what's happening today and try to make a proper point of assessment of what's going on today. That's foolish. The father, regardless of his age, is always trying to understand. He's trying to understand me, He's trying to understand my children. So that reaching out never stops. He never stops. You know, we, we, you, my generation has, my own, you know, has uh, their own tradition, their own value, perception, their own attitude. You can't, you can't really start to uh, influence them on unless you are being, you can, you can be accepted by that group. And uh, you know there are so many different groups in society who has their own, you know, made, it, made uniqueness. We have to understand all those things. Obviously, you gotta know your enemy, right? How can you win without that understanding? So, you know, obviously that is a very, very important thing that many times we neglect to really make it happen in our lives. A lot, a lot of outside people say certain things. And that is, you know, there are two types of moonies. Moonies who can deal with the outside world and moonies who can't. As simple as that. That's how outside people see us as. If you want to change the freaking world, obviously we need to understand the world. We need to be able to deal with the world, right? Only reason I'm trying to be like them is so that I can be accepted by them and ultimately change them. That's my bottom line, like I always say. My means is to beat Satan, defeat Satan. And my end is to create kingdom of heaven and earth. That's it. Yeah, and will justify my means. As when I when we establish kingdom of heaven and earth, all the Wars that we have waged against Satan will be justified, right? Restoration itself, is that an ideal process, right? No, it's not. How can you, how can you say you wage war to achieve peace, huh? That's a contradiction, that's paradox. But that's what we're doing. Every war has been fought based on that generalization. You can't, you can't refute that. That's the reality. And in order for us to be truly successful, we have to know our enemy. 
And it took me a while to understand what makes them tick, what influences them. Because unless we can control the environment, we can't change them. And my primary goal was to focus on the troublemakers, problem makers. To me, solving that particular problem is more important than just inspiring you. Well-behaved, moral people can be easily inspired in comparison to trying to inspire a problem child. But without solving that, without having grasped toward that particular situation, you would never get rid of the problem in the first place. That was the only reason, that was the only reason I put on the clown suit. Huh? Do you wear the uh, garment that you, know, you wear on a uh, celebration, uh, on, a, uh, on a holidays? Are you wearing that garment? To me, what you wearing? This is a fucking clown suit. We wear this to gain certain effect, period. That's the only reason. This, to me, this is just part of a armament. Fighting an enemy in a particular battlefield who are geared in a particular way. Of course, you have to appropriate, just appropriate your weaponry according to the reality, the physicalness of your enemy, presence of your enemy. And that's all we're doing. That's all I'm doing. But many people say this and that. And I, sometimes I sit back and say, what the hell am I dealing with? Huh? What's, this, 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 this? What's going on here? Can't even understand my heart? Huh? Where the hell are you coming from? Somebody's got to do it. Huh? I don't care. I, it's, it's, the mo it's the least glorious, <laughs> least, least glorious thing, but somebody's got to do it. It's a good thing that I don't care about a lot of things. Yeah, I don't care what you think. I do it to please Father, period. I know in the end, he will be proud of me. What am I going to do? Huh? Look, I make albums I can't even sell. People want to take, you know, outside people want to take it. And I make, I just, uh, hastily I finish it. Huh? Just because certain reason I need them. <laughs> Can I take care of certain things? Huh? I'm not doing it for myself. That's no fun for me. Why well, there's no physical reward? There's no physical pleasure in doing it. If I'm going to play music, oh wow. If I'm, oh, certainly, I like to showcase. I like to boast. Huh? Don't you? Don't you want to flag your accomplishment? To the people who will accept it? Yeah, damn right you will. But I can't do it. Why? Because I'm father's son. My father's eldest son. Yeah, I can go out and make a lot of money on my own. Well, what is it, huh? The reason I'm so upset is because I don't like the tone of that kind of letters. Please don't write me that kind of letters. Just tell me how you are. That's all I want to know. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to know how I'm doing. Tell me your problem. Hey. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> so just to try to you know, help you if I can best. If I can help you in any way. And I'm not that smart to really guess and perfectly always hit everything on the mark. You gotta help me a little bit. I don't think every I don't think 
you know. I wish I can do that, but uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to, uh, you know, raise my uh, degree of uh, intuition and the ability to presume things to the level of 100% accuracy. <laughs> But well, that's very difficult. <laughs> but obviously, you know, if one man can do it, one man can beat Satan. That's why you need an army. Amen. Amen. So, you know, I rely on all my people's ability and their uh, power of judgment. But as long as it's based on true parents, and humility. I will uphold and respect their decision or whatever. But if not, I don't give a shit what you have. I don't care if you have 10 PhDs. To me, you're nothing. Everybody can be somebody. I know that. I truly believe that. The thing is, I want you to be, you know, we all have to try to be like Father. <sighs> Think about it. One mission after another, because of our anxiety, because of our irresponsibility, Incompetence, so many waste, so many waste. I, I don't want to. There's so many examples that I can tell you, but I don't want to because I don't, I don't want to defame anybody. There's so many things that I know. I can bring. I can make everybody lose credibility. Everybody just drop down one overnight. But I don't want to do that. I don't want that to be an example to make you realize what you need to realize. Why do I have to destroy somebody's work or somebody's effort to make you realize it? Maybe, yeah, but for the greater good, you can maybe rationalize it, but is it necessary? Do you demand it? Let me ask you that. Do you demand it? If you do, I'll give it to you. Let me just get that off my chest. Do you need it? No. Uh, when you look at the creation, we see a lot of examples, good and bad. That's the whole purpose of creating the creation, the way that God created. We see, create, we see in creation, in the animal kingdom, there are so many behaviors, there's so that are very immoral, right? Yeah, the example, bad example has to be just as stimulating, just as convincing as the goal, good one. This is the textbook. Creation is the textbook. And when I, more and more I understand about the nature of things in nature, I become closer to God. And I clearly understand what God intends mankind to be. That's another beauty. When you look at the creation in that light, you can truly gain a greater insight. Eh? Think about that. A lot of people say, why the hell? They're stupid. They're so arrogant. They can't even see that simple rationality, simple logic behind the purpose of creating the creation the way it has been created, or it has been created. Many times, the, the, the underlying thing, the reason that I stress a humility so often is because that's the key in everything. It's the only way we can truly receive, truly receive God is by being humble. By being humble. Because that's the, there lies love. In God lies love. He is the origin of love. He desired that. He made that to be his subject.
That's why we struggle. That's why I struggle. Dealing with this freaking reality. I want to be divine too. Just as you all desire to be like God, I want to be like God too. <sighs> well, that's difficult. When you have so much enemy. <laughs> so much enemy. You know, the power base of this world is changing, right? It's shifting. Just imagine, just look at all the continents. Huh? They can be self-sufficient on their own. Basic things you need is uh, technology, natural resource, skill level force, well, that basic thing. If you have that, you can be self-sufficient. And every continent has that. Europe, Americas, Asia, they all have that. But what can we do to overcome if the last Satan's strategy is to create a continental barrier? What would be the thing that can override that thing? And when you look at Father, Father is truly creative. Everything that he does, he truly understands the process of creativity. Even when I see him doing simple things like fishing, He's the most, just, 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 uh, student, uh, in, in observe, you know, making observation. He, I mean, he just goes on and on and on until he fully understands what he's dealing with. Truly. Huh? I mean, I get tired, I get bored. Uh, he goes out there and he just search the area forever. He goes out there in the morning and he comes, you know, he, he comes uh, midnight or something. And he does it over and over and over again until he understands it clearly in his mind. And based on that understanding, he arranged things in his mind according to his strategy, according to his design. Now that's creativity. What man has created things that God hasn't created already? Huh? You tell me that. Creativity comes from our ability to make choices and our ability to, based on that, make arrangements on our own desire and needs. That's what music is. That's what art is in general. That's what science is in General, two. And that's what Father, that's how Father thinks. That's how Father works. He truly believes in that. And many times, because we fail to see that, we never accomplish what Father has accomplished. Father has accomplished on his own. Accomplishment on a worldwide level. And that's what you have to duplicate. You know what I'm saying? But of course, your time will be much easier because of the foundation. Right? <sighs> the stupid age video and the homo video, you know? If it is good enough, to be picked up by outside company, to be distributed to uh, uh, all the libraries in America and all the public school and reach all the colleges, hey, we could have accomplished a lot of greater things in the, uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Just the beginning. Once you realize the importance of humility, you can do a lot of things. You can do a lot of things. You gotta be humble to receive inspiration. You gotta be. Why? Because everybody sacrifices one way or the other for a greater reason for, than themselves or just for themselves. They do sacrifice in order to live. 
every day. But when you sacrifice for God, that's a condition to receive inspiration. God is just waiting. His well of inspiration is never ending. But it's because you do not lay the condition to gain that inspiration, to reciprocate with God, who is the origin of all the things that we fail to inspire ourselves and others. That's the only reason that is stopping us from making progress on our level. And we came a long way to make, you know, to enhance the quality of audio, the graphics, and video, and all these things. But the thing is, all these reasons, all these things that we have done, the Father has prepared, the Father saw the need in, huh? was because we need to educate people. And we have to find the most effective way. In the past, we can say that because of historical condition of indemnification, that we had to go through hard course. We had to struggle. But that course is gone. It's a thing of the past. What we need to accomplish is victory, period. And by, by using most effective means, most effective means. That's why after all the condition has been laid, and our Father is now going forth to telecommunication media. Think about it. If Father started this without starting, you know, with a humble uh, print media, print media media, and that print, uh, you know, uh, the newspaper media. Think about the, uh, all the negativity and all the, uh, the scheme, skimmering, uh, uh, all the things that the white people would have done to stop Father. Just think about that. Obviously, television is more powerful than newspaper. But because Father now has the newspaper against all the uh, ridicule have made that newspaper a success based on endless support, spiritual, emotional, and physical, that now it can be a buffer for us to gain a television station. That's why it was possible. That's why we acquired nostalgia. Nostalgia reaches 15 million homes. 20, over 20% of American population. And we hold full, total control. We hold majority share, 51%. We control it. In the past, we all control, we only had 25%. 51%, we control the whole company. That's the focus, where the focus was, and that's what Father told all the state leaders, the Father's direction, intention toward investment in television, telecommunication in general, to state leaders and all the Japanese leaders as well. And that's what we talked about when Father brought 300 Japanese leaders to Manhattan Center a few days ago. So our time is here, I'm excited. And uh, I, you know, it's, just, it's up to you. To, Ball is in your field. You play. You know, don't think that because of you will somehow drop out, the dispensation will somehow go down the toilet. <laughs> She's dead arrogant. Go fuck yourself. Uh, as long as Father is here, it'll go on. As long as Father Spirit is here, it'll go on. And from now on, you will see more of my brothers and sisters. I'm going to kind of fade away. And, uh, you know, I really want to perfect that medium. 
And then I see, I compare myself to my brothers and sisters. And uh, you bother me. You really bother me. You guys really distract me a great deal. And I want to compare myself to my brothers and sisters. The way I started and what, how they're doing, they're much better than I. And uh, that's, I'm, I'm sure you see that. Those of you who, uh, who, you know, who were with me from the beginning, I'm sure you can see that. So, uh, you know, you not just have one person, but you have just dozens of persons <laughs> <laughs> that you can see. So it's going to be more, it won't, it won't be so monotonous and mundane. You know? Kind of boring to see one face, right? I'm trying my best to make my story new every time. And I hate to repeat things over and over again. And I, uh, you see that, right? I don't re try not to repeat the same thing that I say. One way or the other, I, I'll twist it. Other than, because if I don't do it, I, I, I get sick. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, you know, I see, you know, they're willing, they, they want to do it, they're encouraged. And I know you're sick of watching me. <laughs> well, you won't see me for a long time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm okay, you yeah, know, so, so. You know, I, I, you know, at least, at least I'll bow with you. At least bow with you. <sighs> you know, when I, do, let me tell you one thing. When I go outside, I meet, mingle with outside people. I put on a face. And I expect certain things from outside people. But when I come here, I expect certain things. And when I see the attitude that I normally see on daily basis, that fury. That, 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 that really discourages me. This is Belvedere. This is Belvedere. Mother is speaking in Japanese, English, speaking the same freaking message in Japanese and English. We don't even speak Father's language. I don't even want to call it Korean. At least we have to at least try to become unification church. Huh? What the basic things? Your attitude sucks. Your attitude is so individualized. Your concepts are individualized. I just, just, just really, just every time I come here, I get discouraged in many cases. That's why I just don't want to see. I just look straight on. I just, if I sweep the audience, I, I nail some faces. And what I do, I can't help but to just pay attention to that person all throughout the speech. And when I go home, that just drains me out. It doesn't, doesn't matter how well I spoke. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Just that fact that I saw that kind of person. That drains me out all week. It's a Sunday. Yeah. Honestly, that's what happens. Yeah, I can take a lot. Yeah. Well, you... Well, I hope uh, we can all understand each other. If not now, after you'll die, you'll know. <laughs> um, I want to live up to my name. That's all I want to do. We'll see. Ultimately, you all have to do that. I would never 
belittle father or make father lose face just to bring myself up. No matter what. I can take it, but the thing is, uh, when, I, when I see some of you like that, being like that in Belvedere, that's what hurts the true family the most. Let me tell you that much. So, a father's unconditional love. Father has done everything and is giving credits to me. You know, sometimes I was too arrogant to think that I'd done everything on my own. But after I find humility in my heart and look at it honestly and truthfully, could have never been done without Father. Although his words are, doesn't matter. You know, it's necessary sometimes. And you know, one of the uh, ma one of the major actresses rather than the ocean is the desert. The, the way, the one way that it got to be it is is because of the extremity of temperature, expansion of and, and contraction makes all the gravels and the earthy things be grind down to that level. <laughs> but it's necessary that, that the s continental sea and the sea, that extreme, <laughs> is a very essential aspect. So I feel that his love is like that. Sometimes it feels as though it's like a barren desert. But you don't know what lies underneath just as you would when you're on sea, on the sea, rocking on a boat. That's how I, you know. So try to look at it poetically, okay? Try to be artistic. <sighs> it makes your life much easier. Try to analyze forever, and it's just, you know. But when you can think like that, it really liberates you. You know, I, I can truly see his unconditional love. So, you know, but the thing is, you have to understand love based on certain intent, right? Right? That's, many, that's what we fail to realize on many cases. What the love the Father is giving is based on certain will, certain intention, right? A certain viewpoint, certain ways. And based on that, love is unconditional. <sighs> That's what we fail to recognize. And when you are in that position, your life is miserable. Because Father's love will never come the way you want. then God should love Cain just as much as Abel without the offering. God should love Satan as much as Jesus without his indemnity. So it's a simple understanding. So often we fail to recognize because of our arrogance. Put your hand on your heart and you ask yourself, am I arrogant or am I humble? And ultimately, you must answer to Father. So you better be able to answer to yourself. Right?
So in a way, if you're a loving person, you want the judgment to come, right? You do. You want the judgment to come. I'm waiting. Because all the dedication, all the sacrifice that I've given you, and the sacrifice that I'll give you, when the time of my judgment comes, I know what I can expect. That's where I'm starting from, okay? I'm starting from that simple point, very human point. But I, I know what I can expect. I'm a human being. Of course, I have to try to be much nobler, much more graceful <laughs> than that. But my, right now, Honest, my honest intention is to do my best for the day of judgment. Okay, I know. Uh, I can't be any franker than that, you guys. Huh? my place a proud place. And we'll see who accomplishes more. Although I have a great deal of, uh, 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 well, I have a challenging time every time I come here. <laughs> but uh, I have hope. I always have hope in my heart because of what Father gave me. I do. So I'm sure I want everybody to truly uh, inherit the hope that Father felt when he was praying in Pamnakor. Hmm? And your life will be much easier than Father's life. I can guarantee you that much. So I have nothing to say. There is no glory for me, truly. Because without Father's sacrifice, all these would not be possible. Everybody has pride and everybody has egos. And you want to be the greatest. And the greatest thing is being loyal to your family, loyal to your parents, and being loyal to God. Nothing more greater than that. And what they represent, I don't have to say. It's a cliche. So, everybody has their own rate of understanding. And we can, in the future, better control it through a television. So, have hope. <laughs> and uh, I'll also pray for Father's, you know, new mission to make sure that it becomes successful. Pray, pray about it. Pray for it, please. Because that's the most effective way. You know that, right? Yes. Yeah. Most effective medium to educate. There's nothing in this physical world that is more effective than television to educate people, to inform people. <laughs>
There's nothing. There's nothing in the world that's more effective. Our message is to recreate this world based on the message, the word from two parents. And word can transcend time and space with television and reach all parts of the globe. At the same time, his presence, their presence, can be seen on everybody. So you should be thankful that you are living in a time where you can physically be with Father and see Father. But in the future, generation will only be able to see him through television. Also, Father, you know, I'm sure people want to see Father's hands, Father's feet. <laughs> Don't you want to see the hands and feet of Jesus? I mean, you will die and fight nations against nations for the cloth of Jesus. Wouldn't you want to see the hands and feet of Jesus? The Messiah. All those aside, you take care of yourself. You take care of yourself. I can't do anything other than what I'm doing now. It's up to you. I can't do any further. Father can't do it. Nobody can. Nobody can. You take care of yourself. And I know I missed out on a lot of things. I can't just, I got, kind of got carried away a little bit, sidetracked a little bit. There's, there's so many things about Father that I'm sure that you know that I didn't mention that is great in Father. But even the small message that I shared with you today, take it if it can help you. That's why I'm here. I hope that I somehow, in some way, Helped you a little bit to make your lives more worthy and more fruitful and more meaningful and more joyous. Because in the end, the most secure place is in the bosom of your parents. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice week. Je 거든 내 나의 이 개념을 잘라버리고 아버지께서 바라시는 뜻을 중심 잡고 내 완성체가 될 때까지는 아직 시일이 남았다는 것도 한잘 알고 있습니다. 저희들 모두가 다 가야 할 길. 그렇고 쉽지는 않지만 아버지께서 미리 가셔서 본이 되어 주셔서 모든 것을 드러내 주신 한 무슨 불평을 저희들이 할수 있겠습니까? 그렇기 때문에 저희들의 한편으로는 
책임은 더 어렵고 한편으로는 저희들이 마음 먹기에 따라 아버지께서 하신 그더 이상의 실적을 쌓을 수 있는 그러한 저희 자신이라는 것도 알고 있어옵나이다 아버지의 희생 없이 앞으로 미래에 저희들이 받을 영광을 어찌 저희들이 찾아 받을 수 있겠사옵나이까 교만하고 무루한 저희들이 당신의 희생 없이 어떻게 그러한 현실을 이 땅에 드러낼 수 있겠사옵나이까 제 자신이 잘 알고 있습니다 하나님 아버지 하지만 아리상 최선을 다하였습니다 당신께서 바라시는 아들로서 이름 그대로 효진이가 효자가 돼요 세상 사람들 앞에 칭찬받을 수 있고 내가 될수 있도록 그리하여 아버지 옆에 못다한 효도 다 조금이나마 해드릴 수 있도록 저절을 다하겠습니다. 아버지 감사합니다. 이렇게 제 자신을 키워주시고 이끌어주신 데 대해서 진심으로 감사드립니다. 어머님께서 수고하고 계시는 이러한 판국에 저희들도 열심히 주어진 책임을 맡아 전체를 감당할 수 있는 저희들이 될수 있도록 최선을 다하겠사옵나이다. 함께 해주셨기를 간절히 바라고 원하십시오. 아버님의 몸 건강과 하시고자 하시는 모든 일이 뜻에 맞게끔 일치 멀쩡하게 이루어질 수 있도록 하나님 아버지 함께 하시옵기를 간절히 바라고 원하면서 여기 머리 숙여 저희들이 다시 한번 당신한테 약속드리오니 하나님 아버지 걱정하지 마십시오 저희들이 최선을 다하겠사옵나이다 아버지를 위해서 저희들이 최선을 다하겠사옵나이다 한 주일을 다시 맡기겠사오니 이만 전부 참호자하여 간직해 주시옵나이다. 아멘. 아멘. 아버지!